Okay, Peter, had an opportunity to see you this morning. I didn't know if a congratulations was in order. I know this has been a lot over the course of the last day, two days, couple of weeks. Peel back the curtain for me, and I will ask you about the trade deadline in a second. You've been tasked with a lot since you were brought in, and uh, it's been nine months, I guess, how time flies. Put me in your shoes, though. How stressful have these nine months and the excitement level as well been for you? It's certainly been stressful, but it's been exceptionally exciting. We have an opportunity here to really build a first-class organization, and I've been entrusted to make that happen, and I'm very honored by that. Um, the last month in particular, I think we've been able to add a tremendous amount of talent to the organization that's going to serve us really well in the future. The trade deadline in and of itself it was obviously a seller's market. How would you categorize the 2024 Major League Baseball trade deadline? There were a lot of teams that were looking to add players to their roster to help them win this season. And I think because of that, they were willing to part with players for the future that in a normal year they might not be able to or might not choose to. And because of that, I, we were able to acquire a lot of players that I'm really, really excited about. Uh, watching what you've done from afar and obviously up close now, it feels intentional that the moves that you've made, it's 20, 21, 22, double A, triple A, knocking on the door. Is, is that a fair assessment or is that just the way that things shook out? It's the way that things shook out, but we're very excited about that. We are and remain trying to acquire the best players that we possibly can at any level, at any age, whether that's in the draft, whether that's trades, free agency, whatever it might be. We were thrilled that we were able to get so many players who are in double AA, A, triple A, who are 21, 22 years old, still very young, still have a lot in front of them, but might be a little closer to the major leagues than I would have maybe predicted a week ago. And one of them being Kyle Stowers, who was uh, acquired in the Orioles deal with Trevor Rogers yesterday. Don't really want to ask you specifically about all these guys. Obviously, there's a lot to get to. The one thing I am curious about, I believe since May, 13 of the new th top 30 on the Marlins top 30 on MLB pipeline have been acquired. These are humans. They're going to feel as if there's pressure and that they need to bring the organization back to some level of prominence. Are you hesitant to bring some of them up this season so they don't burden the weight of it's a bad year and we're responsible for getting this team back to where it needs to be? It really is a case by case evaluation with what's best for each player what's best for them right now, and what puts them in the best position to succeed over the next year or three years or 10 years. It's about maximizing their potential for us, for the organization, and for themselves. A lot of these guys, while they aren't necessarily too far from the major leagues, they also haven't spent that much time in AAA. Some of them haven't spent time in AA. And so it really is making sure they hit all the developmental check marks that they need along the way. Speaking of those developmental check marks, again, you have a lot of new people in this organization. There is new thoughts, processes, the way in which you're going about developing players. How pleased are you with the developmental process? This is kind of draft aside, but this season under, under your leadership. I'm very, very pleased. I think that we have been and will continue to institute changes um, and try to make best practices and development in really all aspects of the organization and try to get to and stay on the cutting edge of, of everything that we need to do. Back to the draft that is obviously a tricky position as the six o'clock deadline approaches yesterday and, and folks know that Tanner Scott has not yet been traded. Everybody expected him to. You're tasked with kind of either accepting an offer, waiting until the near deadline, and really forcing somebody's hand. How difficult is that, that you make sure you do what you want to do and get what you want back in return? Deadlines are, are fun things. They spur action. <coughs> Excuse me. Deadlines are fun things. They spur action. They spur decisions. And you know, everybody knows when that deadline is. And so I think it does help with making trades across the industry. I think it makes it very exciting for, for fans. Um, and it's just an interesting thing to play out when you are negotiating with other teams and everybody knows what that deadline is. I know you've mentioned things are on a case-by-case -case basis. Obviously, Kyle Stowers up here today. Maybe we see Connor Norby at some point. He's going to play a little bit third. Both of those guys, Norby hitting a homer against the Marlins last weekend with the Orioles. Is there something to letting these kids develop win, lose, struggle together, and you hope that they start to come up in waves in the not-too-distant future? Absolutely. Waves are exactly what we're going for, that layers of talent, that there's each level is brimming with talent, including the major league level. And having guys who are going through the ups and downs of development, of learning how to be professionals, learning how to hit 
double-A pitching, triple-A pitching, major league pitching, doing that all together, I think it's a real bonding experience for them that's very positive and really helps when they inevitably experience failure and makes the positives even more positive. Uh, I know there's a lot of work left to be done. Uh, Peter, you may rest. Thank you for the time. Thank you.